Okay, so another little minute mod that we needed to get done is uh, replace the winch line. Uh, the winch line on this rig is pretty old, and so it was just time for an update. Uh, and for someone who preaches your winch line is potentially your lifeline, it's probably a good idea to have a good winch line on the front. So um, <clears throat> we, I guess we talked about this before a little bit when I did the update. We did the Factor 55 uh, thimble and fair lead. And I'm going to continue to use that. I will just re-terminate the end of the new line off the old line. The other change that we're making is the old line is 5 16 Like I said, I've had that for a long time. I got it when I had a pickup versus a 4Runner, so that's never updated. We're updating the new line to 3 8 and we're going to get rolling. So here we go. Okay, so I thought I was going to reuse some of this old rope as like extension, um, but I just don't think that's going to happen. There's some rust on the drum I'm going to clean up. So um, what I'm doing to clean this up, pretty easy here. You can see that. You can see that was a little bit dirty there. So I'm just, uh, I can just hold on like this. So it's not super shiny. Um, unfortunately, the timeline of my weather, I'm not gonna paint this. And if you wanna like think I painted it, I'll put in some footage right here and then you can pretend. I'm gonna go ahead and get the rope spooled up. So for those that you don't know, this is uh, Amsteel Blue, 12 strand, three eighths. Uh, this piece is about 110 foot long. We obviously lose some as we terminate the ends. Uh, I think for shits and gigs, what I'm going to do to this, instead of putting a bolt down or tying a knot, I'm going to actually just run a uh, run a regular splice around the drum so it can't come off, period. And then spool it up and then put the thimble on the other end. Okay, I set it up like this so you can see kind of what we're doing. Um, I'm going to be working with one of these fast fit basket splice deals. So... All of these have about about how far you're supposed to bury the rope so I just ran this down through the through here right here wrapped it around and so this gives us about our berry length right here just as easily and get my thimble off. So this last little loop is a little bit hard to get out of there. You can see I can get this guy in here to start working this knot out. Alright, it's not a knot I guess, it's just wrap. Okay, so for abrasion guard, because uh, of the job that I was in, I just came across this. This is just hydraulic hose cover. Uh, so, this is like a 15 foot piece, I believe. So I'm gonna cut this down into like three different guards. You never know what you're gonna need, so I'm gonna put it on there, and I'll call that good, huh? Let's use the fit here again. window this guy doesn't really fit in here so 
so you can kind of fish it like this if you wanted. But just grab something else and you can fish it all the way around. So the most typical splice done on this synthetic rope, or at least in off-roading, is what's called the long berry splice. Let's see what we're going on right here. So what you do is you pass the rope back through itself two or three times, and that's basically creating a lock scenario. And then you go ahead and do what's called the long berry. You bury the rope back into itself. What that does is creates a tension like Chinese finger cuffs. So the harder you pull on that rope, the harder that's going to lock down. And even if for some reason that was got loose and was somehow able to pull out where you're crossing the rope through the rope, it, there's no way it's going to pull out of there. Okay, so uh, like I said, it's pretty simple. It takes a little bit of time. If you kind of understand the principle, uh, it makes things a little bit easier. So there you go. And then again, we'll just terminate it the same way as we did before. You take like the last foot or so of uh, rope here, strand it out. So this terminating your rope isn't that big of a deal. It takes a little bit of patience. The fit helps, but like I've said before, you can do this like you can do this a lot of ways a little bit of tape and something straight that you can fit inside of the deal but i mean you know like this is you know it's three eighths rope but you can obviously see how fat that gets right once you scrunch it up there it, it gets pretty good it makes it a lot easier to work with so don't be intimidated all right We'll see if these cutters still work super good. They are brand new, so that's probably why they work so good. Paper again. Alright. After you put the new rope on the truck, you have to do what's called a pre-tensioning of the rope. And what that does is it takes any amount of that little bit of stretch out of the rope. So when you go to take a pull on it, it doesn't like pull into itself. It will pile onto itself if it isn't pre-tensioned right. So what we did here is just took a tree saver, soft shackle, pulley. I think that's about how far away I need to be, 50-ish feet. Then we will run back over to the shackle here. So, disengage. Probably would have been easier just to walk this and walk it back, but whatever. So you can see how that sleeve allows the rope to slip through. Sort of the point of it. So I tried to originally spool this up the way that I showed you the uh, locking splice around the drum and it just wouldn't catch. So no matter what I did, I ended up having to come back and just stick the rope through the, through the drum hole. So you can see the rope is just through the drum hole like that. And then we have started pulling it up under tension. So basically what we're gonna do is we are going to run the truck to keep the battery up a little bit and we will pull this rope in.
may as well exercise the rear winch. I haven't used it since last year, so let's pull it down. Oh, looky, looky. Alrighty, so we got our spooled out. I put this red piece of line on there. Whoop. A red piece of line on there uh, as an indicator, but also as a heat protection from that drum brake. There she is all packed away. Uh, we get in here and unplug the remote, plug it back into the car. And that is pretty much that. So <clears throat> with these winches, you want to run them a couple times a year, whether you use them or not. Take that rope out, make sure it looks like it's in good shape. It's not rotting, doesn't have any issues with it. And then make sure that you have good recovery equipment. So a couple quickies here real quick. Winch remote lives in your rig unless it's broken. Lives in your rig unless it's broken. It doesn't do you any good to have a winch without a winch remote. Um, so while we were using soft shackles today, using soft shackles, Factor 55 pulley, uh, it doesn't hurt anybody's feelings to have real bow shackles and a real snatch block because it's not always gonna be you. If you're using rope, you may have to get into with some people that are running cable. Still don't know why people are using cable. Uh, that's just me. <clears throat> so, I'll just show you real quick what the weight difference looks like between these parts. So, I don't know about you, but it always helps to cut a little bit of weight here and there. I should just go put this around front. Let's just go around the block real quick. All right guys, so like I said, I was gonna show you the weight difference between these parts here real quick. So here we go, check this out. So here's your typical steel shackle or snatch block, excuse me. Say pulley regular snatch block weighs over three times as much. Regular bow shackles, two and a quarter pounds, and there's your soft shackle weight, so five times as much weight. That's kind of a little bit of in and out of those parts. Um, there are other options besides the factory 55 stuff. I mean, really, the only thing that this guy's got going on special for is maybe the Teflon coating, right? Otherwise, aluminum wheels and aluminum wheel. These little rope catchers are pretty cool, okay? But I still noticed when I was over there, this was able to like flop out and the rope was still able to kind of come out of it right there. Um, what I've seen happen with these or what I personally had happen with this style, uh, not a worn part, but a Chinese part, the rope was able to get off and fell off the edge of the pulley right here and that damaged the rope. So you gotta be careful there. Um, aside from that, I really do like the soft shackles a hell of a lot more than the bow shackles. I know everybody has used these, right? It's tried and true, we've had them for a hundred years. So these are fine, they work good, but when you tighten them down, make sure that you tighten them to stop and then back them off a little bit. When these get under tension, that will lock down 
and then you might have to get a wrench or whatever to get it off. That can be a pain in the ass. Um, so other than that, appreciate you watching. Hopefully you can take something away from that. Like I said, the big thing with tensioning the rope is when you actually have to go use it, it won't pull onto itself and what'll happen it'll lock and then it won't unspool it either way and it just kind of can be a total pain. So I'd like to say take 10 minutes out of your life and do that, but it took me way longer than that both times because of other circumstances. But so take a half hour of your life, tension that rope up, exercise the winch once or two times a year if you don't actually have to use it in recoveries and keep the connections clean. Um, yeah, other than that, that's that. Appreciate you watching. Please like and subscribe. Peace.